What's good y'all, Tristan here, and as many of you might know, I've recently moved to Australia. In fact, I've officially been here for 100 days, and each day I've been here, I've written down some minor little difference between the United States and Australia, and so today, here I am to share them with you. Now I could elaborate on each one of these differences, maybe explain like the reasoning behind them, but for the sake of the length of this video, I don't want this video to be like an hour long, so I'm just going to be listing the differences. So if you have any question you want to know a little bit more about any of these differences, comment it below. I'm going to be all over the comment section of this video, so I'm sure to get any questions you have answered. Whew, all right, we got a hundred differences to get through, so let's get to it. All right, number one. So at the gas pump, and I'll show you. One, you don't pay at the pump, and two, you don't pay before you pump. So here, whenever you're getting gas, you just take the little thing, stick it in the car, select what you want, boom, pump. Don't pay a penny at first. You get all the gas in your car, then you go inside, tell them your pump number, and pay the bill. Number two, all locks turn the other way. You might not think you know which way a lock turns, but trust me, you do. Whichever way you think you're supposed to turn it, just know here in Australia, you turn it the other way. Number three, Starbucks is not big here at all. It actually came here, completely failed, and there's only a couple dozen left in the entire country. However, it's probably because of number four, and that is cafes here are absolutely amazing and everywhere. Cafes here completely put American cafes to shame. Number five, sunscreen here is given out for free, kind of like hand sanitizer is in the U.S. Literally, you'll see it in most restaurants, doctor offices, uh, hotels, hostels even, like it's just for free, sitting on the desk just like hand sanitizer in the US. Number six, there's no sales tax, so the price you see is the price you pay. Seven, you're pretty much never expected to tip. Number eight, pretty much all public schools here have four houses, kind of like in Harry Potter, pretty cool, a little jealous. However, pretty much all public schools here also require you to wear a uniform, so yeah, that kind of sucks. All right, so what we call 1% milk and 2% milk is called here 98% fat-free and 99% fat-free milk. Now, I don't really know how to describe this, but what I call community urinals are like a really popular thing here. I don't think it's a proper word for it, but they look like that. I won't say all bathrooms are like that, but like a large percentage of them are, maybe like a third. Whereas in America, I've literally seen that maybe like five times in my whole life. However, something else about toilets, which might come as a surprise, is that you've been lied to your entire life because toilets here do not actually flush the other way. Sure, maybe scientifically they're supposed to spin the other way. However, I've been to probably like over 50 different toilets since I've been here and none of them have actually spiraled all the water just sucks down into it and someone told me to go to maybe like an old park toilet if I wanted to see one spiral and this is what it looks like. So I have yet to see a toilet flush the opposite way. But every single toilet I have seen here has had a button for poop and a button for pee, you know, like use a little water, lots of water. So that's good. You probably already know this, but here in Australia, they do use the metric system, so like Celsius and all that stuff, not the imperial system uh, like Fahrenheit, which we use in the United States. And similar to that, but this really caught me off guard, is that they don't use calories here, I guess like kilocalories. Here, the unit for energy that they use in foods, like on food labels and all that stuff, is kilojoules. So like the scientific measurement for energy. Fun fact, that is a pretty easy conversion, and it's just one to four, so it won't be too hard for you to keep track of your calories while you're here. Number 16 is if you go to a restaurant and you ask for ketchup or some other type of sauce, they'll say sure, they'll give it to you. However, don't be fooled because most likely they are going to charge you up the ass for that sauce. I got a $5 bucket of fries. Asked for ketchup, they gave it to me, and when I got my receipt, they charged me $1.50 for this size of ketchup. $1.50 for that. And the worst part of it is number 17, and it's that it wasn't even ketchup. If you ask for ketchup here, they're not going to give you ketchup. They're going to give you tomato sauce, which... I don't know, they think it's ketchup, but it's not. They're very different. I like ketchup, not really a fan of tomato sauce. All right, guys, so this one really gets me, but here in Australia, they do not call the first floor of the building the first floor. They call it the ground. Now, the second floor, they don't call that the second floor. They call it the first floor. So let's say you're in a 10-story building. You're on that 10-story. We would call that the 10th floor, like number 10 on the elevator. Here, it would be number 9. They call it number 9 because it goes ground, 1, 2, 3, not ground, 2, 3, 4, I don't know. I was at a two-story restaurant and I was on the first floor and it said bathrooms first floor. So I'm walking around the first floor looking for the bathrooms, but it turns out they were not on the first floor. They were on the, or to them it was, but they were on the second story the, because, yeah, you get the point. It's confusing, all right? In school, we would say you're a first grade, second grade, third grade, blah, blah, blah. Here they call it year one, year two, year three. You get the point. All right, number 20, and that is they cuss way more here than we do in the United States. Like, for example, I feel like you would usually avoid cussing around kids or like people like 12, 13 years old. However, here, I feel like once you're kind of old enough to know the words, they just don't give a shit. They just like, I've heard parents cuss around their own kids. People cuss around other people's kids. Uh, I was at the bank and I was setting up like my bank account here and the banker, you know, like dressed in a suit, all formal talking to me. She's like, yeah, you know, like ATM fees are bullshit. And I was like, what? Like, you're not supposed to cuss. I don't know. It just, it's different here. They also like to use the C word. I'm not even going to say it in this video, but yeah, they use it all the time. It's like, they think it's just like 
It's like how we would say the word bitch. Additionally, the minimum wage here is so much higher than it is in the US. So minimum wage in Melbourne, I know, is $20. However, I don't know what that applies to because I know like a lot of industries um, have different minimum wages. So like I work in hospitality and the minimum uh, wage in hospitality is $25 an hour, which is equal to about like 16, a little more than 16 US dollars. In addition, you usually get paid more on the weekends than you do during the week. So kind of like how when you get on overtime, you get paid more. Usually you get that same overtime rate when you're working on the weekends, or at least something similar. All right, next one is that the standard printer paper size here is different. So this is like my notes for this video. On standard American printer paper, this would be a full page. However, as you can see, it's a little bit different here, and I have like extra room at the bottom. The pages are just like a little bit taller, and I think maybe a little bit wider as well. All right, let's get through some fast. So all electrical outlets, they have little on and off switches that look like this. Next, their chip flavors are very different here. They have flavors like honey soy and chicken. Banks and a lot of other like businesses aren't open for long at all. They open at 9.30 and they close at four. Business hours in general are a little bit shorter here. A lot of businesses that would probably start stop at nine in the US will close here at six. When it comes to like restaurants and bars, you'll see a lot of restaurants that just close late. Whatever that means. Really, it just means whenever their business slows down, that's when they'll slow down. In the US, they're a little bit more strict on having like a specific time that they close, whether it's busy or not. The Netflix options, like what they have on Netflix is completely different here, and they don't have the office. Ah! On the line of things being a lot more casual here, you call teachers here by their first names. Additionally, I went to the doctor, you call your doctor by their first name. Not doctor last name, not doctor first name, just the first name. My doctor name was Chris. Hey Chris, super casual. You know like the white cloak doctors wear in the US? No, none of that here, they just wear whatever they want. My doctor was wearing like a very casual button up shirt, but I saw another doctor there who was wearing like shorts and a t-shirt. Speaking of doctors, uh, just like every other major country on earth besides the US, healthcare here is pretty much free. Uh, well, it's paid for by the government. Also, you don't have to wear shoes in a lot of public places. Like you just see people walking around all the time without shoes. Another thing is cricket is like a super popular sport here. My ignorant self only thought it was played in India, but no, it's like played all around the world and here it is super popular. Like it's the second most popular sport behind Australian football. You know, like the sliding door that you use to like go to a porch like right here like that well those are really common in public places and it's caused me to like kind of like run into a door multiple times i'm used to in america you either open the door or the door opens for you however here i don't know why but a lot of the sliding doors they don't open for you or if it's a sliding door you expect it to open for you if you're in public here some of them you do have to slide and they got me and they probably will get you too if you come here. All right, so the next like half a dozen or so things I'm gonna be going through are all related to road and traffic here and how it's different than in the US. So number one is you cannot speed here. Like you literally cannot speed at all. You know in the US, you're going five miles and over, you're probably not gonna get a ticket. Well here, they have cameras everywhere, like little secret hidden cameras that scan your car, see how fast you're going and will mail you a ticket if you're going more than two kilometers over the speed limit. Three kilometers, you're getting a ticket. To convert that to miles, that's about two miles per hour over. In addition, not speed is going to be harder than in the U.S. because the speed limits here are a lot slower. The fastest speed limit here in Australia is 100 kilometers an hour, which is equal to 62 miles per hour. However, you will not have to drive while you're here in Australia because that is my next difference, and that is the overall like roads, transportation system that they've built is not built to maximize the speed for cars. They really focus on having good trams, trains, buses, you, like public transportation is awesome. So I know I just kind of shit on the roads a little bit for not being fast or whatever is in the US, but overall it's good. In Australia, they absolutely crush us on the stop sign game. I never noticed until moving here how many goddamn stop signs we have in the US. They pretty much have completely eliminated four way stops or like the vast majority of them by putting in traffic circles. Additionally, whenever there's like a road like this that doesn't stop and then a road like this that like these two stop, you know, like a two-way stop, a lot of times they won't put a stop sign there and they'll just put a yield sign, which is like really nice because, you know, in the U.S., a lot of times you just roll through the stop signs. However, you could get a ticket for that. Here, they're like, nah, it's cool. You don't have to stop. We get you. You can roll through. We're just going to put a yield sign up. Additionally, whenever you're driving in the U.S., there's like a yellow lane, you know, like to divide like the cars going this way from the cars going that way. So you know not to go over there. Well, here, it's just like a white line. Sometimes it's solid, but sometimes it's like not solid. It looks like you can just go over there and like switch lanes. However, that's like oncoming traffic you're going right into. Why don't you have something in the middle of the roads that is like a clear divider between like cars going this way and cars going this way. You probably know this already and I should have listed this first, but they drive on the left side of the road in Australia. Additionally, you know how we can turn right on red? Well, here it'd be turning left on red because you're on the left side of the road. Anyways, you can't do that here. There's no left turn on red. All right, now the one that got me the most was the green and red arrow. So real quick, and when you're going through a light in the US, it's all green, like green dot or green arrow. Here, it's not like that. They always keep wherever you can't go on. So like if you can't go left or can't go right at the moment, they'll have those red arrows on. If you can't go straight, but you can turn left, they'll have like a red dot saying you can't go straight from that lane, but also the green arrow. It just gets a little confusing. Now my next several differences are all gonna be alcohol and like drinking or bar related. 
because uh, there's a lot of differences about that here in Australia. Alcohol here is so much more expensive when you buy it from stores. So depending on what you're getting, it's probably going to be between two and four times more expensive to buy it alcohol here in Australia than it is to buy it back in the US. Except wine, wine here is really cheap. However, that is not quite the case when it comes to like buying drinks at a bar. It might be like about 50%, maybe twice as more expensive at a bar. That is because you are getting less alcohol in each cocktail than you'd be getting in a drink back in the US. So a standard shot size here is 30 milliliters and a standard shot back in the US is 1.5 ounces or 45 milliliters. So yeah, a shot here is about two thirds of a shot that you'll get in the US. In addition, you know, in the US, you know, there's, there's ways you can get a little bit more alcohol in your drink, whether you know the bartender, whether you know you're tipping really well, something like that, you can get more alcohol in that drink. However, here that's pretty much impossible because they don't free pour. So you know, America, you just free pour the drink into the cup, they judge what's about a shot. Here, that is illegal, there's something that you measure a shot out with and then you pour that into the drink. So you know you're getting exactly 30 milliliters one shot of alcohol in your drink. In addition to not free pouring and like measuring shots, they measure like all alcohol that they give out. So for instance, beer, you know in America you can get like, oh I want like a, a jumbo beer. You don't really know how big it is, like an ounce is not measured. Here in Australia, there's only four different sizes of beers you can get. And they have a name for all of them, the smallest is a pot, then schooner, pint, and then a jug, which is like a pitcher of beer. So you know exactly how much alcohol you're gonna be getting with each drink. Another difference is bars and clubs can go a lot later here. It's all about which license you get. It's not like a law like it is in the US, where most places in the US, you know, everything closes at two. Here, there are tons of bars that go to four, six, five, I don't know, whatever hours they want us to close at. Um, there's actually one bar here I know that's like 24 seven. It's literally just always open 24 seven. Whew, all right, this one is gonna be a heartbreak for you Americans, but probably a big sigh of relief for most Australians. And that is, Foster's is not a famous Australian beer. I haven't seen it, I don't know where it comes from. Um, if you don't know, there's this beer in America called Foster's and it literally says on it like, famous Australian beer. And I don't know where they got that from because I haven't seen it here. I've talked to Australians like, None of them have heard of it. It's not. It's literally not a beer here. Another difference I've noticed at bars is it is not as common to go bar hopping here. A lot of nightclubs especially, they charge cover for you to get in. So it might be like 30 bucks for you just to get in that night. So it's a lot more common to like pick a place, go there, and then spend the entire night there and not hop from location to location. So we all know what a light beer is in the US, right? Like you think of a light beer, you think of Miller Light, Coors Light, Bud Light. A light beer is a beer that is light in flavor. Here, that is not the case. A light beer, doesn't matter what it tastes like, a light beer is something that has a low alcohol content. The alcohol content in it is between two and 3%. All right, another difference is you're not allowed to sell alcohol in grocery stores here. However, they do get around it by having like a separate liquor store inside the grocery store or like right in front of it outside. But technically, a grocery store cannot also sell alcohol. They also don't sell alcohol in gas stations or like places like CVS and Walgreens. Pretty much the only place you can get alcohol from is like an alcohol specific store. Next up, so they do not chug beer out of beer bongs like we do in America. Instead, they chug it out of their shoe. That is right. There's this thing here called a shoey. I don't know how it came to be, but as you pour your beer inside your shoe, chug it out of your shoe, you think I'm lying? I know you think I'm lying and making this shit up. Look it up. It's called a shoey. Really popular in Australia. Comment below if you want to see me do a shoey. If you're driving on the road, there are breathalyzer tests literally everywhere. You see them all the time. It's just like this big bus. They just park on the side of the road. Bunch of cops are out and they make every single car driving by blow. They collect their BAC. Make sure they're at the legal limit to drive. Doesn't matter what time of the day, night, morning, middle of the day. It's about two miles from me from here to go to work and I've seen it two or three times just in the past month. The legal limit to drive here is much lower than in the US. So the, your BAC in the US is 0.08 is the legal limit. Here it is 0.05. So almost half the limit which is it's not much at all so better be careful now, off of alcohol but onto something similar drugs is that drugs here are so much more common than they are in the US and I'm not talking like weed I'm talking like heavier drugs like cocaine MDMA super common here see it all the time you must wear a helmet when you're riding a motorcycle you also have to wear a helmet when you're riding a bicycle their french fries here are so much saltier than they are in America. It's not just any salt that they put on them. It's a secret ingredient called chicken salt. Don't ask me, I don't know what it is, some chicken voodoo stuff, and I think I like them better than American fries. Speaking of fries, McDonald's and McCafe. So McCafe here is like a separate part of McDonald's. Like you go into a McDonald's and there'll be like a register and like a, a separate menu here for McCafe, then right over here is like the rest of McDonald's. In America, McCafe is just like a section of the menu of McDonald's. But when you're at McDonald's and you're getting your McFlurry, they don't mix the damn m ms in with the ice cream. Ugh, I don't know what's wrong with them here. They literally just put vanilla ice cream in a cup and then sprinkle some m ms on it. They don't mix it up. It's not the same. Australia, get your McFlurries together. Different note, lots of people here are named Lachlan, or Lockie for short. Never heard that name in my life. Probably met about 10 to 15 people here named Lachlan. It's 
literally everywhere. All their food here has like this health star rating, which is like, I guess a quick gauge to see how healthy the food is for you or not. Kind of nice, but overall in general, the food standards here, like the food quality standards here are so much higher than they are in America. One thing I noticed here was that the eggs here are like orange, like the, the yolk's like orange, it's not yellow, it's like a much darker color um, than in America than what I'm used to, and I thought something was wrong with them. Turns out that all that means is that the egg is healthier, like the chicken's been fed better, yada yada yada, all goes back to the food standards. Something else about eggs though, is there's no white eggs here. And that's not because brown eggs are healthier, that's what I thought, that's a lie. It's just because brown eggs and white eggs come from different types of chickens, and I don't know, I guess they just don't have any of the white egg laying chickens here. The most annoying thing about Australia, the one thing I hate about Australia is their flies. The flies here are so aggressive. Like, imagine, like, you know how they, like, attack poop and they, like, swarm around it and you wave them and they, like, come back to it? Imagine you're the poop. They don't move, they're aggressive, they get, like, on your face and there's, ugh. And to make matters worse, there's so many different types of flies. Literally, sometimes you'll see, like, normal looking flies and you'll see, like, these big old fat flies and then you'll see, like, these huge flies five times the size of a regular fly. And then sometimes you get these damn flies that bite you and they're the worst. Like, Imagine this, imagine a mosquito, how much you hate mosquitoes, and then like, imagine the aggressiveness of the flies I'm talking about, and then imagine that those flies bit you and they left you itchy like mosquitoes. Enough said, the flies here suck, and I hope they all die. All right, next, pool tables here are smaller than they are in the US. They do listen to different type of music here. I mean, they still listen to like American music, but there's a lot like music that's like more just like basses and beats, like stuff like that. Uh, music with no words to it, it seems to be a lot more popular than it is in the US. All right, I can't spend too much time on this. It's way too hard to explain, but all I'm gonna say is the grocery carts here, their back wheels move too. So imagine like, let's say I'm trying to move my grocery cart like over here. I have to go like this, then kind of come back and pull it here. Here, the grocery carts, because the back wheels move too, you can just take it, push it to the side, push it this way, like they, they swivel, you know, you can, you can push them carts any way you want. So, grills and parks are free. I'm not talking like a grill that you can like put your own charcoal in and cook some up. No, there's like gas grills in parks for free, it's awesome. Next, drink sizes here are much smaller, so you know, if you're gonna get a soda, it's not gonna be anything like this, it's gonna be, you know, like that big. In addition, there's no free refills at restaurants, and overall, portion sizes are much smaller here in Australia. No surprise. They don't give out to-go boxes at most restaurants, which is annoying because you just waste the food if you don't eat it all. But you usually do eat it all because the portion sizes are smaller here. Guess that's more of an American problem. That's probably why we have to-go boxes because you can't eat all the damn food they give you. All right, something that's similar to portion sizes, but it's not it's slightly different, is the pizza size here. If you get a large pizza, that's a personal pizza. The smallest size of pizza you can get at, I don't know, let's say Domino's, I was there a couple weeks ago, is a large. Then they also have like extra large and stuff like that. If you get a meat lover's pizza, which is one of my favorite pizzas here, you don't get it with marinara sauce. It usually doesn't come with marinara. Instead of putting marinara on it, they're gonna put barbecue sauce on it. This is something I found I actually really enjoy, really love. I found barbecue sauce just goes so well on meat lover's pizza. It belongs in there and marinara sauce. I'm sorry, I love you, but you're not as good as barbecue sauce when it comes to meat lover's pizza. All right, next up is that whenever you get chocolate milk from a grocery store, it looks like this. There's just like a bunch of chocolate at the bottom you have to shake up. Also, if you get any type of juice, it's the same thing. There's like a bunch of shit at the bottom. You shake it up, it'll all be good. I don't know why it just isn't mixed up to begin with, but that's how pretty much every juice and chocolate milk and whatever is here in Australia. Also, if you see something that is called the something hotel or something hotel, it's probably not a hotel. It's probably a bar. For some reason here, Lots of bars are called hotels. Literally a couple blocks from where I live is some place called the Exchange Hotel, which like Exchange Hotel like definitely sounds like a hotel. It's not, it's a bar. Next up, money here is very colorful and made out of plastic, but most of the world has colorful plastic money, so we're just kind of weird on that one. Next up is Australians get way much more vacation time than Americans. It's like kind of standard here. You're gonna get like five to six weeks of vacation um, a year where you're not getting that in the US, but like, you're getting like two weeks. Similar to this, it is very common for Aussies to take a gap year between their like, what we call high school and college. I feel like there's just not as much of a pressure to like, you have to go to college. Like I think in the US that is a ridiculous pressure that so many kids are faced with. And here they see the whole picture like, oh look, I can travel for a year. Oh, I can take a year to work and like find myself more. Or, oh, I don't have to go to college to get a good job. I can just like become a tradie, become an electrician, plumber, you know, something like that. They're definitely a lot more open-minded when graduating high school. Next up is something called superannuation. And let me tell you, it is awesome. Pretty much what it is, is every time you get a paycheck from your employer, they have to put in, on addition to how much they pay you, like a minimum of 9% more into your super fund, which is a fund that, I don't want to get into the details, pretty much it gets invested and you get it when you're old. It's kind of like our social security, but it's like way better and a way more efficient system. I kind of wish America would adopt this system. Next up, the news here is so much more worldly and well-rounded than news in America. All right, this is what we call a possum in the US. This is what they call a possum in Australia. 
much cuter. This is a huge generalization, but in general, guys here do have longer hair than the guys in America. Gas station stands have like wires in front of them so that angry customers can't go in and like stab or beat up the clerk. The ovens here have so many settings. Like one oven, instead of just being like on and like temperature, it's like there's like eight different ways you can cook your food in an oven. Also in general in the US, whenever you flip a light switch up, it's on and down, it's off. Well here, you, you push them in, it goes like, it's like, the, it's like the pushy ones. But when you push it up, it's off. And when you push it down, it's on. So it's like switched. Another generalization, but cars here are in general smaller. And also internet service here is much cheaper. Like half the price that you'd pay in the US. <sighs> All right, second to last one, number 99 is lamb. Lamb here is a really common meat. Like I'd say in the US, it's like chicken, beef, pork, and then like all other meats are like way below that in popularity. Here, it's like chicken, beef, pork, lamb. Like lamb's literally just as popular as like pork here. Whew, all right guys, last one, number 100. But before I get to this, I just wanted to say I've worked super hard on this video and I'm really proud of it. It means a lot to me if you gave it a like or commented or best yet, share this with a friend. The next video I'm gonna be posting is gonna be 100 words that Australians say different than Americans. So if you'd like to see that video, you can click on it right over there. It's another one that I've worked really hard on and I think it's really cool. Now, lastly, number 100, and that is sour Skittles here do not have the sour stuff on the outside. That's right, they just put the sourness somehow inside on the inside of them. Don't like them as much. I like the sour white stuff that's sprinkled on the outside of our sour Skittles. See you later, guys. Peace. Thanks for watching.